Actually, I don't. Don't need these. It's really messing up my bald spot. You know what I'm saying? I get this like bald spot from being old and stuff. And then like I like just like have pretty hair other than the bald spot. But it's like cool because like one of these days I could afford like Rogaine with minoxidil or whatever that's called so that I could grow pube hairs on top of my bald head. Or I could just shave it. I could either go with the, uh, what's that thing called? The, there's the Picard, you know, when you just got it, like the old man horseshoe thing. And then there's the monkey's ass. And that's that's kind of what I got. I got the little bald spot on the back. And then I got my long hair just kind of dangling over it. So nobody laughs at me in the bathrooms of America when I, you know, like comb my hair and they walk behind and notice I have a bald spot. <laughs> anyway, welcome to Mountain Eye Time. I'm your host, DJ Ransom, the Freedomist. But you can just call me Ransom because I am just a normal stoner, just like you. Just like all of you out there in television, YouTube land, and radio land, which we are on the radio. This is Mountain High Time on Revolution.radio. And there we go. Let's look at some of these articles that we got to talk about here um, so I can stop looking at myself in the mirror. I feel like Paul Joseph Watson or something. Oh, wait. There we go. All right, look. Like Six Flags, Israel. New York flight forced to divert. Passengers hospitalized the Friday flight from Tel Aviv was forced to land 60 miles from New York due to wind shear. I bet Hamas had something to do with the wind shear. Just kidding. I'm just stoned, so there's that. Okay, so this recording shit, it just ain't going to work, so I'm just going to stop that here. Just going to have to do it live. Fuck it, we'll do it live. She was living in a single room with three other individuals. One of them was a male and the other two, well, the other two were females. God only knows what they were up to in there. And furthermore, Susan, I wouldn't be the least bit surprised to learn that all four of them habitually smoke marijuana cigarettes. Smoke marijuana cigarettes. Welcome back to the second half of Mountain High Time. I'm your host, DJ Ransom, the Freedomist. And we're also live streaming on YouTube and Rumble and at various other places. And let me get the confirmation that my mic is through there. And 
Oh, yeah, there's me. There's me smacking my gums. And that's my cue. You know what? Happy Easter. Or Yoster. Or whatever they call it these days. Is it a pagan holiday? It is a pagan holiday, so... Unfortunately... You know, some people get all upset about that. It's just kind of that marking right past the spring equinox that goes all the way back into antiquity where man kind of hung out and liked the day on that day. You know, cherish the day like Christmas, the winter solstice and other events out the year. Matter of fact, that's a good place to get started. Let's get started this Easter weekend with some Easter stuff. Let me check it out. Biden. He's our favorite guy. Let me put my headset on. All right. There we are. Biden, the guy, the special guy. He declares Easter Sunday, Transgender Day of Visibility. The Transgender Day of Visibility. How about that? Joe Biden's White House declares Easter Sunday the most holy of Christian holidays as Transgender Day of Visibility, claiming that transgender Americans are part of the fabric of our nation. A very fancy fabric. Biden issued a statement on Good Friday claiming that the new holiday will honor extraordinary courage and contributions of transgender Americans and reaffirm our nation's commitment to forming a more perfect union or at least a country that identifies as a union and a country that identifies having a constitution but you know we like to pretend these days you remember back in the day when you were a kid and that other kid that made the hot wheels fly or you know he wanted to be some kind of fantastical character that had nothing to do with what everyone else was doing well The future is here, and now you have to pretend with people or you go to jail. But I digress on that. Let's get back into the Easter. Now, therefore, I, Joseph R. Biden, Jr., President of the United States of America, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Constitution that I poop on all the time, and the laws of the United States, do hereby proclaim March 31st, 2024, as Transgender Day of Visibility. Isn't that awesome for those people that like that, I guess? I had something else I was going to read. Yeah, here it is. Let's read over here. The origins of Easter itself. Um, You know, some people celebrate it as a Christian holiday. But why not be a transgender visibility day? I mean, it's a day where chickens pretend to be rabbits. Rabbits pretend to be Willy Wonka's chocolate fan factory and poop out little bits of chocolate for your kids to find i'm just kidding it's it's a fun holiday and matter of fact i'm gonna take my kids my little kids out there and they're gonna hunt for you know little easter eggs full of all kinds of treats toys and other things uh, because i think it's fun i think it's cool it's a good reason to go outside it is spring and why not uh you know bring in spring with representations even though they may be pagan of the old you know, pagan world of bunnies and, uh, you know, eggs, signs of fertilities. I'm surprised, I guess because snakes eat eggs and rabbits that they don't put that fertility symbol up in there in springtime too. But uh, <laughs> that would be cool if snakes were part of the party. Anyway, Easter is linked to a pagan springtime goddess, Yoster. According to Han, celebrated during the spring equinox, Ulster was the first documented in the 8th century as associated with some Easter traditions that have lasted to this day. You know, like painting them little eggs. I like eating the deviled eggs and eating the Easter meals. Yes, I'm an American. I don't really care about its significance in your personal religions, whether it be pagan or... Yoster or, you know, what evs, or you just want to be, you know, a pretend person, visibility, you want people to see you pretending, whatever the case may be, I digress. Let's move on to some other news before I get myself in trouble on Facebook. Uh, oh, wait, I'm not on Facebook. YouTube. Oh, wait, they do that too? They all do it, don't they? They don't let you, uh, you know, talk about nothing. 
Anyway, let's move on to the next one. Venezuelan TikToker who went viral telling illegal aliens to invade the U.S. and take their homes by squatting in them is arrested by ICE. So the Venezuelan criminal invader who went viral on a TikTok urging fellow illegals to squat in the United States in homes owned by people has been arrested by the Immigration and Customs Enforcement, otherwise known as ICE, ICE, baby, ICE, ICE, baby. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, ICE officials, um, you know, they say that uh, old Linnell, Leonel Moreno, was arrested by ICE Detroit Field Office in Columbus, Ohio on Friday, who confirmed Moreno was detained pending further immigration proceedings because, well, he embarrassed. He embarrassed, oh, Mr. Transgender Visibility Day guy, uh, Biden. We we need all these new holidays, man. You know, uh, yeah, what would we do without holidays just for no reason? And speaking of all the new weird stuff, is DEI racial slur? Is it racist to talk about it? Uh, the rise in terms outrages, according to this article, black Americans from Newsweek. According to them, black Americans say DEI has been co-opted as a racial slur after conservatives sought to blame diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives for the deadly Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse in Baltimore. Authorities say a cargo ship lost control. <laughs> yeah, it lost control... Uh, yeah, it, it lost control. It seemed to lose control directly at the pillar of the bridge, but, you know, that's just my opinion. And it struck one of the bridge's supports, causing it to collapse. Two of the construction workers who were on the bridge were rescued. The bodies of two missing construction, wor construction workers were re recovered Wednesday. Ah, wow, all those W's and R's got me. Wow. Were, let me start over with that. Construction workers were recovered on Wednesday while Sally seashells were selling at the seashore. That was a tongue twister for me. I'm sorry. It, you know, but anyway, I think you get the point. Four others are still missing and presumed dead. DEI programs have become a frequent target of right-wing activists in recent years, and Republican lawmakers are backing dozens of bills targeting DEI initiatives at universities and other public institutions. Some sought to cast Baltimore Mayor Brandon Scott, who is black, a as a diversity hire, despite him being elected to the office with more than 70% of the vote in a city with a predominantly black population. He was dubbed Baltimore's DEI mayor. Actually, if you were doing diversity inclusion, um, you know, all of that stuff over there, you might you would probably hire like a, a white uh, German guy that just got off the boat or maybe Irish. I don't know. To be different, I mean, you know, to include other people and stuff. I, I used to live in Prince George County. I think it was about 70% also predominantly black. So I didn't see many other uh, whitey faces around there or or native or, or Asian or Hispanic. Well, except over in Alexandria, you know, across the way um, in the old town, like some of the first neighborhoods. I went to Taco Bell there and uh, AutoZone and uh, I, I forgot what the other store was. But all four stores I stopped at, no one spoke it English for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe they needed some diversity, equity, and inclusion programs in those neighborhoods um, because no one there was able to verbally communicate um, with me. Except for I do know, you know, Spanish enough to get by. But uh, the point was, is uh, well, I didn't feel like I needed to use that. At least one person I felt like should have known English somewhere. I mean, otherwise, how did they get here? How are they doing business? How are they doing anything? Unless they're, you know, being homogenous in their communities and not including any kind of diversity or equity or any of that stuff. I'm just saying. For some reason, that idea doesn't go both ways. But in my opinion, this is just me, my lonely old stoner opinion, DEI is ridiculous and it's unconstitutional. The idea that you would hire someone based on their ethnicity, skin color, or, you know, some other stupid, uh, you know, 
irrelevant factoid about their life doesn't have anything to do with their skill set in accomplishing the job. And I don't know, maybe I am old school, but, uh, you know, when I was out there hustling and trying to get a job competing with all kinds of people, I had to bring something to the table or, you know, I didn't get hired because I didn't know how to do anything. Um, you know, when I was young, I didn't know how to do anything. And other people that had skills would get those jobs until I learned skills. And then I started getting those jobs. But no one, I mean, no one was going to have just have someone standing around of any demographic just solely because they're different. Um, you know, you had to hustle and bust butt at work. Uh, so, you know, if you have the skills for the job, then you should get the job. Matter of fact, I personally think that no, you know, employment uh, application or government form or any other thing should ever reference race or ethnicity or religion. Those things are all private things that should fall under the Fourth Amendment. When you look at a resume, it should say your work experience, your skill set that you're claiming and a telephone number to reach you if you actually want to go to work. But, you know, them, them's just some silly ideas of this old stone. Just kidding. Joe Rogan accuses Israel of genocide, compares Gaza to the Holocaust. Is that fair? Let's listen to what he said here. Let me mute myself and let's hear that. Sorry, it's not not playing anything for some reason. Anyway, we'll just read it. Who cares? Anyway, podcaster and martial arts expert Joe Rogan is coming under fire for accusing Israel of genocide. And actually, I, I did watch the clip already. And he does say that it's a genocide and it does resemble the Holocaust, or at least the films I've watched for the Holocaust. So if you think that's anti-Semitic, I think you're silly. And, you know, all you have to do is look at footage of Gaza, uh, the way it used to look, the way it looks now. And this is has nothing to do with geopolitical opinions. Just look at the neighborhoods, look at the destruction, and then look at the places that the people uh, are living now, and then go back into the 40s and the 30s and look at a uh, film of... The ghettos. The ghettos. It's the same thing. You can say it's not. You can, you know, pick your team, your tribe, your, your, uh, whatever. Killing is killing. We all know that. Anyway, the Jewish News Syndicate reported addressing video footage on social media purporting to show Palestinians being killed in Israeli bombs, which I did watch the video, and it was about four people that were unarmed walking. I don't know if they were children per se, young men at least. And yeah, they got a uh, predator drone, boom, 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 just smited off of this planet for what? I am not sure. Uh, I don't know what the uh, motivation for bombing them was, but I don't think it was probably a good one. Joe Rogan told the millions who listened to his podcast, the Joe Rogan Experience on Thurs or Tuesday, that Israel was committing genocide. Then he brought the Holocaust into the discussion. You're saying that a from a perspective of someone who literally went through the Holocaust, uh, or your people, your tribe, you went through the Holocaust and now you're willing to do it? He said, apparently directing his statement at Israel. Democratic Majority for Israel, a pro-Israel group within the Democratic Party, slammed Rogan's comments as wholly false and dangerous, placing them within the context of other fringe views that it claimed he holds. Israel allows thousands of tons of food and other essential goods to enter Gaza. Well, except for that one time when they when they dropped the food and then like the drones and stuff and everybody just accidentally just started shooting at the whole crowd. But whatever, you know, I don't know nothing. Let's move on. Palestinians reject a proposal to introduce an Arab multinational force in Gaza. According to a report, this recent proposal by leaders of the Arab, Arab world would see a most multinational force establish order in Gaza with whispers that Arab leaders are interested in seeing a similar force in the West Bank. And something like this is going to happen for one reason or another because they will have their war. They're going to have a whole 
big, nice, biblical type war. And this is something I've been saying for a long time. And other people are catching up and now saying it too. And it's a theory that I've had since I was a small child that everything that I saw in the news when it regards to Israel um, seems like that a group of the world powers, at least from World War II on, specifically want an Armageddon-style unfolding of self-fulfilling biblical prophecy. And I say self-fulfilling because they'll make sure that certain things happen that religious people see as providence or as divine plan. And one of those things would be knocking down the uh, dome on the rock, getting rid of that uh, mosque, and starting work on a third Solomon's temple. And they already built a little ramp, you know, they want to cut the heifer up and stuff. So they're on board with this self-fulfilling prophecy. And as you know how the story goes, um, uh, an entire war comes from this. But I digress. Let's look at it. And, and, uh, you know, we're going to see this anyway. From Ukraine all the way down to the Middle East is slowly turning into the World War III shatter belt situation multinational, multi-ethnic, multi-religion world war. Anyway, Palestinian factions in Syria rejected the proposal. Well, you ever notice that uh, peace is never achieved from either side? Neither side ever says they want peace. Both sides seem to be committed to the destruction of the other side. That's just the way it is. That's the way I see it. And Ukrainian-Russian, you know, relationships are seemingly turning that way too the only problem is for the ukrainians is they're disappearing all their paternal and maternal haptites disappearing off the face of the earth as they march into the meat grinder but i digress on that let's move on counter terror investigation launched after iranian journalists stabbed outside of london home hmm i'm sure this has nothing to do with the multi faceted expanding conflict in the Middle East. Um, an Iranian journalist was hospitalized after being stabbed multiple times outside his home on in London on Friday afternoon. British counterterrorism police have launched an investigation after the stabbing of UK-based Iranian journalist. Uh, I'm not even going to try to say that. Oh, of course I will. Paria Zerate. Probably didn't say it right, but anyway. Who hosts a program on the... I- Iran International, excuse me, Iran International Televised Network, which has been heavily criticized of the Islamist government of Tehran. According to information reported by the Telegraph, Zarati was leaving his London home about 3.15 on Friday afternoon when he was approached by a man who attempted to engage him in conversation. While this was happening, another man came upon him from behind and began stabbing the journalist with a knife. You know, I would think that this sounds like a political assassination or a terrorist event, but, you know, ever since they took the guns, I think that's how stuff goes down over there. You know, pokey, pokey, stabby, stabby. Um, yeah. <laughs> you're you're not going to pull out your dirty, hairy gun there and say, hey, do you feel lucky, punk? Not to them, because, you know, they banned all the guns, so everybody's just stabbing each other, That which is much more humane. I mean, kind of like, you know, back in the 12th century, or it's way better than bullets. So if we would just get out in the streets and hack each other to pieces with big, sharp metal objects, I'm sure that that's way more humane. Matter of fact, you know, back then, I bet all of those middle-aged, uh, or, or excuse me, medieval times people that would hack each other to death with those big, large, metal, sharp objects, they probably, you know, sat around as kids playing um, Viking video games. And, uh, you know, Roman video games and all these other, you know, civilizations. They probably had little games that were like video games that caused the... No, I'm just joking. Of course. Just joking, of course. But it is not so funny that uh, the guy got stabbed to death there. Uh, Whatever his politics are. Seems like a... A trend maybe over there in the UK to get stabbed to death. But who would know if it was just random street crime or a political assassination with the kind of environment that's going on there with the uh, lack of the Second Amendment. Civil War filmmaker Alex Garland in the US and UK. There's a lot 
to be very concerned about an Oscar nominee. <laughs> like, I care. So, what Oscar? Like, who cares, man? I think they really think that the general public care about, like, Oscars and all of these awards when they kiss their own butts and stuff. Like, we care. It's them giving themselves awards. whoop de doo But anyway... Our Oscar nominee has an in, in list of hits to his name from 28 Days Later to Ex Machina, Ex Machina, however you say that. So why has making a thriller about a divided America pushed him to quiet the director's chair? To quit, excuse me, dyslexia and illiteracy strike again. Um, it quit his director's chair. Alex Garland smiles broadly only once a while in my company and it's when I'm about to leave as I put on my coat and say goodbye an irrepressible and unmistakable grin of relief spreads across the filmmaker's face blah 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 this is the guy that uh, made the Civil War uh, movie it's kind of like a predictive programming movie pushing that the United States is at the verge of Civil War and if I'm not mistaken has some Obama dollars involved in that but I don't think that's going to happen. And besides that, just think about that. Would the government really allow groups of civilians to fight each other? Maybe. Um, in a scenario where it was civilians against government, that's kind of silly. Because, you know, once the FLIR bops out, you're just little Christmas lights on a map waiting to get lit up. Not unlike those young Palestinian kids or young men that got... Uh, smite it off the earth i mean because that's basically what would happen uh to any real insurrection if it was government against civilian but i don't think that would ever happen because our government's full of us and our government has people that they you know their families and their cousins and and their brothers and their sisters and their families so a lot of those people would side with the people and not the establishment, and vice versa. You would see that happening. So I just don't really see that as a real thing, Even despite years and decades of them trying to push for some kind of civil war. I just don't think it'll ever happen, uh, a real grassroots civil war amongst Americans. But you never know. There was the Cultural Revolution in China, and, well, who would have thought a bunch of young people would get to go around and beat to death their elders um, that held positions of... Uh, civilization and just beat them to death and then you know have decades of being behind all the other nations because they killed all the thinkers but it happened anyway now chinese migrants are sneaking on into guam top republican warns communist party wants to exploit every part of the u.s map and warns critical american base is vulnerable a growing number of chinese nationals have been sn sneaking in from northern marina Mar Mariana, excuse me, islands into Guam. Guam's Homeland Security Agency reported 118 unlawful or attempted unlawful entries by Chinese citizens since 2022. I wonder how many Chinese citizens just walked across the border in Arizona, California, New Mexico, and Texas because, you know, or, or got helped and given water and some papers by the Border Patrol. Who knows? We know it's starting to be upwards of 40 million people that are now hanging out in the U.S. that are not actually citizens. And that's just an estimate. Fear of missing out? Find the joy in saying no. Oh, what is this? I don't even know why I have this open. We're, we're going to check it out because I like to say no. I, I say no once in a while. Like, no. With the advent of social media, we have profound ability to see and highlight reels of everyone's life and the potential for comparison. Research shows that the higher levels of FOMO, or fear of missing out, are associated with lower self-esteem, lower life satisfaction, and more loneliness. For better, for better mental health, try refraining from those feelings of FOMO. Instead, try finding JOMO, the joy of missing out. Oh, okay, so it's just a article written by the Washington Post. Um, get over yourself. If you're having emotional problems because you don't fit into a social media uh, environment, you should just delete the app and move on about your business. Matter of fact, the lights went out here. The power went out. Miniature grid failure here where I live. And the hum and the noise and the uh, overall vibe of electricity just being gone for like a period of time was so relaxing 
to just disconnect completely all the way out of the electrical grid and just be in quiet evening darkness. It was wonderful. Now, I was looking around, all kinds of other people were freaking out. There was only probably four houses in the entire neighborhood that they had their had their stuff together and had lights or solar lights or outside or a flashlight in their pocket. Almost everybody else, boop, victims, lights went out. So weird to see how many deer will be in the proverbial lack of headlights in a grid down scenario, but I digress. How to spot a psychopath, according to the psychologist who spent 20 years analyzing America's most dangerous criminals. This ought to be interesting right here. When asked by his fifth grade teacher what he wanted to be when he grew up, Dr. Nicholas Carderas said psychologist. But 10-year-old Nicholas had no idea his career treating mental illness would in 2020 lead him to sit across the table from a teenage killer who stabbed three friends with a utility knife. Corey Johnson, the 21-year-old Floridian who grew violent after becoming enthralled with his Islamic extremist group, ISIS. Oh, man, I'm sorry. I get into these articles and I start reading ISIS and I just, all I hear is CIA. We funded them, we trained them, we organized them, we bombed them, and we helped them bomb other people. Matter of fact, ISIS, for some reason, only attacks countries that the U.S. has a problem with, which is ironic because America is one of those places. United States is one of those countries that supposedly got attacked by ISIS on several occasions or ISIS-related or Islamic extremist groups when we all know that's just little assets of the CIA. So when I hear this, I'm already like, oh, God. Anyway, let's go on. Corey Johnson, the 21-year-old Floridian who grew violent after becoming enthralled with Islamic extremist group ISIS, was the latest in a line of cold-blooded killers Dr. Cardaras had been employed to analyze. I wonder if this guy's like that Air Force doctor guy that visits, like, you know, Timothy McVeigh and the Zarnoff brothers. Not the Zarnoff brothers. What were those guys named? The... The ones that supposedly blew up the bombing, the Boston bombing kids. Yeah, right. Anyway, and he found Johnson to be similar in character to that of other young dangerous criminals he had met over the years. Surprisingly regular, in fact. He'd even go so far as to describe him as a sweet kid. Far from being devoid of empathy, Mr. Uh, Dr. Kadara subjects have appeared to him to be naive observer, to be perfectly nice. The world-renowned expert has spent much of the last two decades accessing the mental health of violent people, many of them teenagers. Why all these teenagers got to go out and be crazy? That's, that's weird, man. Maybe they're not getting the right kind of weed. Um, now, Dr. whatever his name is, has given DailyMail.com fascinating account of his professional life, including what it looks like into the eyes of murderers and potential school shooters. He has also shared his fears for the future concerning he predicts an uptick in shootings and stabbings as a direct result of increased exposure to violence in video games. <laughs> didn't, I say, didn't I say that? that? That's what was going on in the Middle Ages too, man. You know, when they were just hacking pieces together with 10,000 troops, you know, just going together, just making mincemeat out of each other. They totally did that because they played too many video games in their home village, man. Anyway, he must uh, uh, assess if the accused is mentally ill, a cold-blooded psychopath, or a lonely, empty person looking for some extreme thrills. His judgment contrib can contribute towards saving someone from a life sentence. So what's he looking for specifically? Psychopaths have a dark, shark-like look in their eyes, a dead stare as... That sounds more like emotion than a scientific observation. But anyway, more often than not, if the person is prone towards violence, it's an emptiness. It's almost like a dead fish. The dead stare can make the onlooker feel as if there's other person is looking straight through them, free of any sort of emotion or expression. Yeah, uh, I think we all already knew that about psychopaths, but whatever. So the doctor said that this signals to him that the person is looking for a rush of good feelings, like a buzz a typical person might experience from eating chocolate or watching a funny movie. Oh yeah, totally stabbing to death someone's exactly like eating some chocolate. 
Offenders pursue this rush by looking for violent content online or by playing violent video games. And the more they see, the more desensitized they become. To more disturbing content must be sat satiated that need. Well, the only problem with that is, is that uh, I don't know how many millions and millions and millions of children have been playing games like Call of Duty and other games that are shoot 'em ups later within a decade or so to just join the military and go actually live through some of those scenarios. So did they join the military because they watch video games? Maybe. Do you think people are prone to violence because they play video games? Doubtful. And the reason I say that is because we had a whole generation of Tom and Jerry and, you know, Popeye the Sailor Man and all of these other cartoons where they would hit each other in the head with a frying pan, drop an anvil on their head, put dynamite up their butt, blow it up. I don't know. I'm just saying none of us did that. Like, I don't remember ever going to say, hey, Dad, you're sleeping there. Here, wouldn't it be funny to put this piece of dynamite in your mouth and light it on fire? <laughs> hey, maybe if I drop an anvil on your head, you'll just grow a big goose egg and everything will be funny. No, not really, but killers did go out and kill because, well, that's what killers do. So all this nonsense about um, the environment making them that way, maybe. Maybe if they were abused as children or something like that, but uh, a worry-free lifestyle, you know, I don't remember playing Super Mario Brothers and, you know, just feeling the need to go jump on every turtle I saw. I'm just saying, some of these doctors like to write articles, man. Anyway, colleges are facing an enrollment nightmare. You think that's because, like, they offer a bunch of meaningless papers out to people and then they just owe a bunch of money. And there aren't really this vast amount of intellectual jobs necessary to run a country. Matter of fact, it seems like we just need more regular workers to get paid a normal wage so they could afford to have a single family home and a nuclear family and pay for that for, with the job that they do, whether it's in the oil field or ranching or whatever kind of old school job that's being replaced by robotics. Um, what are you going to do in the future? How are you going to make resources uh, when the prices of everything go up and the private property of the lands get slowly, incrementally taken by banks, real estate companies, and governments, billionaires, and foreign nations. What are you going to do in a world where there are no manufacturing jobs, there are no technical jobs to build things because those jobs have all been replaced by learning machines, algorithms, artificial intelligence, and robotics? Well, you're just going to be a debt slave that's what you're going to be, which means that as far as the world government's concerned, you're just a useless eater. Ironic that these are the same pools of people that get rad radicalized to the left um, and, you know, go out and burn cities down because they feel like there's some kind of injustice about a functioning civilization. But you know what? In order to reset, you got to turn it off. Like a computer, you have to sh completely shut it down to reset it. And that's exactly what the world elite are doing and what their plans are. Um, I've covered the technology many times. We are at a point where you don't even need a biological mother and father to procreate some kind of sentient or, you know, assumed, assumed a sentient being that they're creating that they call a human-like embryo entity that they can then grow into some kind of new species of humanoid and completely from birth to death propagandize and hook it right into their transhumanist cult that they have planned for the Great Reset in the future. And part of that plan is pretty obvious. Destroy the monetary systems of the world in the nation state, in the nuclear family, in masculinity as a man, because we all know that the last firewall of any kind of tyranny would be exactly that, masculine men from each uh, you know, area of the earth, and the motivation for them, which would be their family, to prevent tyranny from you know, raining down on their heads. Unfortunately, uh, first they destroy the family, which makes people into a more singular mindset, like an ant, and then you have an ant colony. And you might as well propagandize them, mind control them, and slowly implant your technology to control them from birth to death. But I digress. Let's move on. AT&T says leaked data sets set 
impacts about 73 million current former account holders. Well, it doesn't affect me because I never gave any sensitive information to any phone or used it over any phone, and I've never really used any AT&T phones. But sorry for you 73 million Americans that now have your financial, uh, biometrics, metadata, etc. Uh, exposed to the world, to anybody can use for anything. But that's the way of the new world. Uh, but that's the reason that they're promising you this new universal monetary system connected to your you know your credit score your carbon limit and all of these things so you can know when it's your turn to die when it's your turn to shut up because you haven't been accepted by the hive because what you're you know what you're doing is a thought crime thinking outside of the bubble thinking outside of the box or thinking outside of the flock of sheeple Mwah. anyway Sorry for you guys that you lost your data. Maybe you shouldn't, uh, you know, leave your data around for people to steal. So weird that we have a government that spies on us all the time, but no one's worried about that. They're worried about, oh, somebody got hacked and my data got, what am I going to do with my, uh, my bank card? Wow. No showers, no sleep. Van life isn't as cool as Instagram makes it seem. <laughs> so you might want to, you know, keep paying those taxes and own that land and get some kind of trade that, uh, you know, funds that land. Anyway, um, some guy, I'm not going to try, try to pronounce his name because I'm bad at that, bought a white Ford Transit in August and decided to make it her home. She needed a place to live, and the idea of traveling full time in a big cargo van sounded like a fairy tale. Soon she was off camping from her waitress de decamping from her waitress job in Missouri with plans to live off her savings while exploring the West Coast, <laughs> where they rob you and everybody's living in their van. Ah, uh, yeah, that's how they get out there. I guess that's why all the streets out in California, you know, from one end to the other, have all these old broken down RVs and uh, uh, mobile home, or what do you call them? Uh, I forget what, the trailer RVs and, and, and the, uh, <laughs> the whole RVing thing, and they're all broke down. See, they were just going to live in their van and save some money and move out to California where it's super expensive, and then the next thing you know, you know, their buddy, you know, laced a joint with some fentanyl, and now they're on the curb, you know, asking people if they need favors for a little bit of uh, suicide powder or pill or whatever they're using to inject. That sucks. That lasted two months in California. Her transmission died. Ever since, she's been working a three part, uh, three part time jobs to regain the five thousand dollars she had to spend to get it fixed. And that's another thing. All these people think they're going to go out and RV in these fancy RVs. Guess what? The parts are expensive. So you, can, if you can't afford the parts and you can't in, afford insurance, wherever you break down, that's where you're going to get stranded. It wasn't exactly the journey she expected, but she still prefers it to her old life as an apartment dweller. And, you know, paying rent does suck. Throwing money in the toilet or in the trash can monthly does suck. That's why I suggest you get a piece of land, even if it's a crappy piece of land, and uh, you start uh, squatting on your own land, which is funny, because that may be bring government and law enforcement uh, telling you that you can't just be on your land as a free, natural, feral human being. And you got to set up some infrastructure there, which cost money. Everything is ten times harder, said Julin, 23, but everything is also amazing and beautiful. I'm living my best life with, uh, you know, the sidewalk poop and all the hypodermic needles right outside of my van. It's like, cool, man, but sometimes I drive out to the desert where there's like nothing and I can just poop on the, on the land. Kidding. Uh, the idea of van life offers a range of promises, affordable housing, minimalist living in... Instagrammable beach and mountain vistas. That's right, because you know you want to live in that fake world where you take pictures and say everything's so great. Ah, look at my steak and asparagus. I'm living my best life. <laughs> no. Anyway, eight bridges that are vulnerable to repeat the Baltimore crash. Let's get into that for a minute. Fewer than ten bridges in the U.S. have been uh, have clearance of the. Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, the 1,200-foot span that collapsed after supersized container ships slammed into one of its vertical supports. All of them have vulnerabilities where the f failure of even a single steel component and tension along the span could cause a collapse. 
The National Transportation Safety Board flagged this condition in Key Bridge after it fell early Tuesday morning. Um, but the hit that destroyed the key wasn't a blow to one of the crucial steel components. Rather, it was a devastating strike taking out the bridge's concrete vertical supports, known as a pier. Uh, that caused the massive structure to cascade into the water below. Shh. Huh. Anyway, let's look where. skip down to where they have some other bridges. The fact that the vessel size of the Dolly, a 984-foot container ship weighing 95,000 pounds when empty, brought down a mighty bridge with satisfactory inspection records, highlights a vulnerability in U.S. commerce. Ships of all kinds, including crews and container ships, have grown bigger and bigger, especially after 2016 when Panama Canal was widened, allowing them to enter East Coast ports from Asia. Today, federal guidelines require bridges over a na navigable waterway to be protected from potential vessel strike. So how did it happen? Among the safeguards are dolphins or independent barriers meant to deflect straying ships away from the bridge's piers and fenders that attach to the piers to absorb a vessel's impact. I don't think that would have helped in this situation. Anyway, let's skip down to where's the other bridges. You like how they they try to hold you hostage for a while in their article before they get down to the uh, other bridges. Okay, let's see here. Do, do, do. No, ah, they went through the whole article without actually saying the other 10 bridges. There it is. It's some other bridges. whoop de doo They're just saying that there's like 10 more that are probably going to collapse. You never know. Especially if somebody accidentally, you know, drives their ship right into the pillar, of course. Uh, isn't that funny? Anyway, let's move on. A congressional race in Iowa is testing whether or not national uproar surrounding vitro fertilization will help Democrats win in November and potentially tip controversy control, <laughs> excuse me, of the House in their favor. In the state's first congressional district, Democrat Christina Bohannon is challenging Republicans, Republicans, Republicans. I had a, I had a stutter moment. Excuse me. Um, anyway, for a rematch for 2020, this time, Bohanna is talking to voters about her personal experience with IVF, learning into a fight over reproductive... Oh, my God. When I heard Alabama ruling, it just made me really angry that these politician, politicians, or in that case judges, would just take the opportunity away. So Bohannon, 52 years old, a law professor at the University of Iowa, she said she went through several rounds of IVF, which were unsuccessful to try to have a second child. Democrats think the battle over reproductive rights will shift their voters in the direction the same way abortion boosted the party in 2022. Ah, ah, I don't know. Surprising to me, actually, that... So many people are having problems. I just realized our time's running out. But so many people are having problems with the children area. And, and now the population of the entire world, for the first time, has declined and is in a plateau. And it's going to keep declining for various reasons. One like this one, men are becoming less fertile and we may finally know why. Why is it? Who knows? It might be all kinds of things, actually. But whatever they are, it all seems to circle around the Western world. But let's see what this article says. Speaking of disappearing babies, you've heard of the gut microbe. You've probably heard of the skin microbiome. But did you know that there's also semen microbiome and that it could affect fertility? Oh, this sounds like this might be going into bacteria and STDs. That is the finding of a recent study about the, uh, of the Department of Urology at the University of California, Los Angeles. Microbiomes refer to the collection of microbes, bacteria, fungus, and viruses that affect human health. While there have been many studies into the microbiomes found in the digestive system and the skin, there has, to be less, there has been less focus on reproductive systems, particularly in men. However, the UCLA team found that one microbe, in particular, the bacteria Lactobacillus inners, can have a direct negative impact on sperm mobility, which in turn affects fertility. The microbe is more widely known as the cause of bacterial 
vaginosis in women and is the most commonly found in bacteria found in the female genitalia biome. While the study published in scientific reports was not able to pinpoint the exact link, previous research has revealed that lactobacillus inners can produce L-lactic acid, the less common of the two types of last lactic acid, which can lead to localized inflammation. This inflammation may impact sperm mobility. In other words, they just can't squeeze out as many as they need to. In addition, analysis performed by conjunction with microgen diagnostics enable researchers to determine that three types of bacteria from the I'm not even going to say that a very common type of bacteria in other words were found in patients with both normal and abnormal sperm concentrations so nothing then <laughs> here's the next one why are older Americans drinking so much because uh, they want to and older Americans are more likely to drink alcohol because they grew up drinking alcohol and younger generations are not drinking as much alcohol because they smoke more marijuana uh, I think that's the answer. I'll just skip to it. Skip to it. American YouTube star, what a dumbass, your fellow Arab kidnapped in Haiti while trying to meet a gang leader. Barbecue. I don't know how he thought that was going to end, but I hope they didn't barbecue him. Hmm. Anyway, 220 years. Once per 221 years, that's what they're saying about the love bugs, trillions of bugs to swarm and... Mating frenzy in weeks. It, la it last happened to the founding fathers. So if that's one of your signs, you know, for you to think about stuff like the eclipse. You know how people got all pumped about the eclipse finally coming over the entire U.S. Uh, last time saying it hadn't happened since 1776. And here's another one of those things for people that believe in the signs. In late April, two large broods of periodically cicadas are expected to emerge from the ground for a noisy mating frenzy. Two large broods of periodical cicadas are going to emerge from the ground in the U.S. in late April, scientists say. Brood X... What, 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 X I, 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 so 8 and 10, or 9, and have been living underground for 17 and 13 years, respectively, and will emerge at the same time for the first time in 221 years. Billions... Even trillions of cicadas are going to emerge at the same time across 17 states. Chris Simon, a professor at UConn's Department of Ecology and Evolutionary Biology, told Live Science that Brood 8 and Brood 9, oh, excuse me, 29, Brood, I got that wrong, that's Brood 8. You know what? I just had one of those elementary school moments. It's not 8, it's not none of that stuff. It's 13 and 29. I'm sorry. Stoner moment there. Anyway, 18 and 39 underground for 17 and 13 years respectively. They'll soon emerge at the same time for the first time in 221 years. Ain't that cool? Once they hatch, the nymphs feed off the root sap underground until it's time to mate. Mating season has been described as a noisy, chaotic displace display that could happen for weeks. I love those things. You know, they leave those little cool... Uh, shells of their self i remember when i was a kid i used to play with those those were cool anyway prepare for putin pivot to invade us say the baltic states probably not going to happen sounds like propaganda to me putin friend predicts nuclear strike most likely coming Ooh, more war propaganda vladimir putin can exploit this nato loophole to attack the u.s and not trigger article 5 Wow, there sure is a lot of stuff about Putin. His drones helped Ukraine on the battlefield. Could he be Turkey's next leader? I don't know. Is he going to bomb some more stuff? Speaking of drones, Walmart, Chick-fil-A, 7-Eleven, they're all rolling out next-level technology that aims to deliver items to customers in a matter of minutes. The three mega brands will be the first companies to launch new drone delivery service with Virginia startup DroneUp. Huge brands partnering up with the Virginia startup launch a new delivery by drone service. And this is cool cuz you know, they're just going to they're just going to send you everything. You don't even have to leave your house. 
You can stay at your rented apartment, you can own nothing, and you can be happy. Because Drone Up CEO Tom Walker has introduced the company's proprietary autonomous drone ecosystem on Tuesday, saying it could revolutionize last-minute logistics. The, that includes war, by the way. So anything that you think of in the private sector about how it can do something just think they can kill people exactly that way the system differs from existing drone deliveries because it includes a climate controlled locker referred to as a dbx where drones uh, pick up packages the dbx is said to be smaller than a single parking space allowing smaller retailers to use the new technology too the lockers can serve as delivery hubs on college campuses and in the city in your super city in your 15-minute city, giving more people access to drone delivery. They're going to bring you your burgers, everything. Sounds like swarms of bees will be coming to your house to deliver Walmart's goods. Just a whole, a whole gaggle of geese, electronic geese, and they drop off your food. <laughs> I hope you like living in the new world because that's what's going on out there. You know, just one last article because I'm feeling silly. So I read an article the other day that said the next wave or potential wave pandemic in the U.S. will be super gynorrhea. Super gynorrhea that antibiotics can't help. And then the very next um, article that I came across was STIs and seniors. Study reveals overlooked sexual health crisis among adults over 50. Just think about all those saggy, crusty whatnots getting it going on getting their groove on i'm just kidding i'm almost at that age too so i'm a little crusty around the edges myself barcelona spain if you think sexually transmitted infections stis are just a problem for young people think again those young people get old and they keep on doing it causes of gynorrhea oh excuse me cases of gynorrhea syphilis chlamydia and other sti STIs are rising rapidly in older adults across the world. I don't really think it's rising as much as they're just finally getting tested and the tests are telling on them because they're getting old and they need medical um, intervention on certain things. But yes, grandpa and grandma are getting busy and forgetting to wrap it up. At the European Congress of Clinical Microbiology and Infectious Disease, a big old long acronym of letters, in 2024, experts plan to shine the light like really people really want the light shined on their STDs, but whatever, on overlooked sexual health issues and call for more openness when it comes to discussing the sex lives and needs of the over 50 crowd. People do not become asexual with age. In fact, preventative medicine and improved lifestyles are letting people enjoy healthier life and sex life for longer, explains Professor Professor Something, an infectious disease expert from the Medical University of Warsaw. The data shows this is no small matter. In the United States, rates of gynorrhea among 55 to 65 uh, are, have quintupled from 2015 to 2019, going from around 15 cases per 100,000 people to 57 per 100,000 people. Similar trends have been seen for syphilis, chlamydia, and other STIs in this age group. I think that's romantic. I think that's really romantic. <laughs> and as we wrap it up on Revolution.Radio, thanks for getting it on. Getting it on. When you were younger and you made all those kids that populated the earth, why not? Get your groove on. 50 plus. Getting it on. That's what I'm going to be doing. Anyway, thanks for listening to Revolution.Radio. And think about contributing to their PayPal, to their Patreon. I'm out. This has been Mountain High Time. That was very dirty. <laughs> In the ancient world, gold was magical. Gold was a manifestation of the sacred and objects fashioned from it were a means of connecting with a supernatural world. Far from passive deposits of wealth, gold was sacred 
It was greatly prized in cult. Objects made of gold were active agents in an ongoing engagement with powerful forces. The Inca used gold to make ritual objects, combinations of gold and silver and gold and copper called tumbaga. Wearing gold jewelry was a sign of a person's wealth and power. For the Inca, gold was also the blood of Viracocha, their sun god. For the Mayan people and many others in ancient America, gold was part of a complex symbolic system. Gold is mentioned in Greek mythology for examples as varied as King Midas, the golden fleece stolen by Jason who possessed the power of resurrection, through to the golden apples of Hesperidins. The golden apples were guarded by the hundred-headed dragon Ladon. The dragon conferred immortality on whoever ate them. Over the past 5,000 years, from the Egyptian pharaohs and the merchants of 14th century Venice to world governments in the space age, man has treasured gold for its utility and value during times of both prosperity and disparity. Through the rise and fall of great dynasties and civilizations, gold has maintained its purchasing power as a reliable store of value for millennia. Gold has been used as money since 560 BC, when King Croesus of Lydia created a gold coin in his own image. Ever since, it has continued to increase its long-term value and remains the world's most universally accepted form of money. Today, the demand for gold continues to flourish globally. History proves that fiat paper money is designed to go to zero through inflation, whereas gold has intrinsic value in which it maintains forever. Paper money is a debt instrument. Gold is an asset of wealth in its own right. It does not depend upon any governments, corporations, or individuals promised to repay. ITM Trading has spent the last 27 plus years developing a team of expert researchers and analysts to make this possible. Simply put, uh, we build strategies which are historically proven to protect your wealth and assets through any economic downturn or currency collapse. Schedule your free gold and silver strategy call 866-834-1422. That's 866-834-1422 or go to learn.itmtrading.com forward slash M-I-A-C and keep watching Mountain High Time and Mini Ice Age Conversations if you know what's good for you. Releasing the show notes from our programs, just bullet point list of what we talked about so you can start the conversation with others or do a deep dive in your own research. Head over to oilccrops.org in the nav bar. You'll see MIAC radio show. Click there, put your email, and we'll get that out to you on a weekly and please remember with YouTube's algorithm running today, like, subscribe, and click that bell to get notified. Cloned food, edited food, fake food, and the unhealthy foods of all kinds. That's not what mama was a cooking when you were a little bambino. You want to know what's in your food? I know you do. Heaven's Harvest, as protein booster kit, is the bolster of your daily emergency meal plan. Containing only essential proteins, beef, chicken, and eggs stock up on vital amino acids and nutrients required to thrive in all situations. They got the fruits and vegetable buckets, the breakfast bucket kits, and for a you health food nuts, they got an organics kit. Now that's knowing what's in your food. They even got the heirloom seed kit so you can plant your own food. Heaven's Harvest Heirloom Vegetable Seed Kit is a simple way to start storing seeds safely. Not sure what varieties are hardy, easy growers which thrive and taste the best. They have a taken the guesswork and time out of the process of seed saving. Now you know what's in your food because you grew it. Go to heavensharvest.com. You can save 15% at the checkout with code ADAPT.
Thank <laughs> you. 